Hi, I'm Greg Bain with Nature's Alpine Solutions, here to talk to you today a little bit about foliar feeding. Uh, foliar feeding is a probably older uh, way of putting on fertilizers than most people realize. It's roughly about 300 years old. And in the mid-19th uh, century is when the first documented journal article on foliar feeding uh, occurred. So it, it is a fairly old process. Foliar feeding should be used as a supplement to soil fertility. Uh, soil fertility being very important in the overriding source of most nutrients. Uh, also with foliar feeding, the primary plant structure that you have to deal with is the cuticle of the plant. Uh, the, the cuticle serves obvious functions for a plant in terms of water retention, water relations within the plant. Uh, but what it also does is it provides a barrier to the penetration of foliar applied nutrients. So foliar applied nutrients need to penetrate through the cuticle to get to the cellular structure below. Uh, the methods of getting across the cuticle are typically diffusion. Um, the solution also is absorbed through cracks and imperfections in the cuticle itself. And then there's also some specialized modified epidermal cells like stomates, lenticels, trichomes that the foliar applied product can be absorbed through rather quickly. Some of the major factors affecting the success of a foliar feeding application is the solubility of the nutrient itself, uh, point of de deliquescence, which is how long the, the nutrient can stay moist on the leaf and therefore be absor absorbed. Electrical charge of the nutrient being applied, the pH of the solution, pH of the, the leaf surface, temperature, humidity, and the size of the nutrient. Uh, the two real important envir environmental factors, unfortunately, that we can't control are temperature and humidity, and this has a, a large impact on the success of a foliar application. And typically, the best time for a foliar application is early in the morning or late in the evening. And these times throughout the day is when the humidity is generally high and the temperature is lower. Uh, what you do not want to do is uh, put on a foliar application when the plant is under some kind of stress. And that stress could be from moisture, lack of moisture, could be uh, insect pressure, uh, could be compaction and the plant's just not healthy to begin with so um, the amount of liquid to put on you want to put on enough for good leaf coverage up to the point of runoff on the leaves uh, if you apply too much volume of solution uh, your application can end up just uh, falling off the leaves and then you have something that's no different than a soil, soil applied fertilizer also uh, that things that can work greatly is a surfactant added to your spray solution. This allows the water droplets to further wet and, and wet more extensively, get more and better coverage on the leaf surface for, in turn, better absorption. Um, the plus, the, one of the advantages, or another advantage of foliar feeding is the specific timing of plants and applied nutrients. Plants would like certain nutrients at certain times of their developmental stages and, and foliar feeding can well meet those timing applications. Uh, and in summary, the good benefits uh, of a foliar feeding program is you can time it with pesticide application so you don't have to go out there on a separate trip to apply a foliar application. So if you're out there treating uh, an herbis treating with an herbicide, insecticide, pneumaticide, whatever, many times you can include a foliar nutrient application with that trip. So when you can combine trips, you obviously reduce trips across the field, which saves money. That lowers or reduces the amount of compaction. And then also, many times, foliar applications increase the efficacy of your pesticide application. And undoubtedly, probably the most important thing is, and you'll hear it with many different forms of fertilization is always jar test. Can't, can't stress that enough. Uh, today a particular mixture might work, tomorrow you may have difficulty. Uh, so always can't stress enough the importance of jar testing for compatibility.
If you have any questions, give a nature's agronomist or DSM a call, or you can call technical services at the facility and we can give you more specifics. Thank you.